Hello, my name is Luis de Abreu. I am the Stematics Program Director here at Bergen Community College. My role here at Bergen Community College is to direct the STEM program, which is a grant that we receive from the Department of Education, a $5.3 million fund that will help us conduct activities for all the students at Bergen Community College. The STEM grant was received in October 2016, and it will run for five years until October 2021. The STEM grant has three main goals. Goal number one is to engage our students in academic-related activities as well as student support services. Goal number two is to establish strong partnerships with four-year institutions, corporate partners, as well as government agencies. And the goal number three of the grant is to equip our students with the financial empowerment to complete their degrees. In order to reach these goals, the grant has a series of activities, 11 activities to be precise, that will run throughout the five years. The Stematics Grant is a data-driven uh, program. The activities are provided based on a need on campus. Uh, the activities are proven to be effective and valuable for students focusing um, in their STEM programs. As of the fall 2017 semester, there were about 2,500 students enrolled in STEM programs, which is about 18% um, of the BCC student population. The top program would be the computer science program, um, general natural science and math is also a po popular program as well as engineering science, biology, and information technology. Activity number one, supplemental instruction. You will hear about it, but you will know how important this tutorial service is for you and any student here at Bergen Community College. Hi, my name is Ikra Shabir and I am the STEM Supplemental Instructions SI Coordinator at Bergen Community College. Supplemental Instructions or SI program is an academic program or a learning tool that targets historically difficult courses with high D, F and W rates. We provide a support system to the students to assist them with the highest failing and dropping courses such as pre-calculus, calculus, physics, chemistry, biology, etc. To achieve this, we send trained SI leaders from the pool of tutors who have already taken the course and have received a B plus or better. The SI leaders sit in the class with the students, take notes, lectures, do quizzes, homework and provide a strong academic support to the students throughout the semester. Not only that, but the SI leaders hold sessions called the SI sessions twice a week depending on students' availability and go over the day-to-day -day lecture materials and work collaboratively with the students during the sessions. The SI leaders at Bergen Community College are trained and are someone with strong interpersonal and leadership skills. During our training, we make sure to cover different learning styles, training strategies to strengthen academic performance of the students, and communication skills. If you see an SI leader in your class, feel free to benefit yourself. The Center of Supplemental Instructions is located in room S119, which is right across the testing services. Activity number two is the implementation of academic, transfer, and career counseling for all your questions and needs. Hi, my name is Jackie Stoddard. I'm an academic advisor working with our STEM students in A118. Um, we work with our students in an academic environment in order to make sure that they're taking the right courses in order to fulfill their STEM degrees um, and receive their associate's degree from Bergen Community College. We also work in career counseling in order to discuss um, different possibilities that you have moving forward in um, STEM careers and different um, trajectories of your career field. Also, we can talk to you about transferring to um, different four-year institutions within the state and make sure that you're taking the courses that will transfer to those universities if that's what you're interested in. We also have different workshops on campus regularly. One of them is our workshop to um, help you with your resume. If you don't have a resume and you're starting from scratch or you just need some help brushing up on the resume you already have, we hold different um, things throughout the semester um, that can help you professionally and educationally. Also, we have the availability of doing a book voucher. If you come and meet with an academic advisor or an academic counselor four times a semester, you can do that once every two weeks or once a month, and you meet with us to um, discuss different academic um, issues or questions that you might have. 
you get a $200 book voucher towards a STEM book for your next semester. We also host local institutions here on campus um, that you might be interested in transferring to and we make sure that you have all the information you need in order to be successful in your STEM education as well as your STEM career. Activity number three is the professional development of our faculty to address the needs of a culturally diverse population, infusing culturally sensitive teaching. Activity number four is the introduction of online tutoring, as well as online supplemental instruction or online SI. In the STEM program, we're very excited about a new initiative concerning online tutoring. Many students do find that chemistry is one of their more challenging subjects and are very happy to have the opportunity for tutoring. Due to their busy schedule, sometimes it's not possible to get down to the tutoring center. So with this online tutoring program, students can access videos that have been developed and produced concerning specific chemistry topics from any place and at any time. The feedback we have gotten from many students is that these videos do indeed help them feel prepared and perform better on their exams. Activity number five is the development of the STEM Student Scholars Program, or 3SP, which is a STEM Honors Cohort. These students, if they fulfill the academic requirements, they will be inducted into this prestigious group that will fulfill a research element, academic element, as well as a service element. What we do is we pair mentors with a student. They develop a project and they take it from conception to completion and presentation. The student and the mentor jointly come up with a hypothesis from their observations, develop a methodology, gather data, crunch the data, make their conclusions, and then finally present it before a group. Why do an internship with our 3SP? You want experience, you really do. One of my friends from high school was pre-law, he became a lawyer, he hated it. That was close to eight years down the drain. So you really do need to experience this and see if this is what you want to do before you invest a lot of time. Um, or you validate your interest. Or maybe you learn that you like this aspect of the field but not this one. There's always advantages of getting real-world experience in this. Our STEM program encourages students to transition from passive learners to active participants in their fields. We're going to give you the experience. We're going to give you the opportunities to enter this field. So this STEM program can be your overture, your introduction to the field. We have students doing all sorts of amazing things. Chemistry, we're doing physics, we're doing math. We're doing so many things. Activity number six is curriculum changes to the engineering science program here at Brain Community College. Why we do this, we just want to make sure that the transfer process for all of you is a smooth sailing process. Having been involved with the STEM club for many years, I've received lots of feedback from students who have graduated and moved on to four-year colleges to pursue STEM fields, including engineering. And uh, one of the things I've heard back from them about is that a lot of our courses don't transfer. And so um, one of the things we wanted to do is make sure that under the new grant is to make sure that uh, our classes do articulate properly to the target four-year schools. And those target four-year schools typically are uh, Rutgers and NJIT. So we set about under the grant to modify two of the courses. One of them is engineering mechanics and both Rutgers and NJIT did not want us to be teaching dynamics in that such a course. And so what we wound up doing is eliminating dynamics and focus on statics. So now both colleges uh, accept our engineering mechanics course. The state of New Jersey requires that all associate programs uh, only have 60 credits. And particularly in engineering, we were at something like 66 credits. So we had to eliminate some requirements to get the engineering associate at Bergen to conform with what the state wanted. And the problem was that um, we had to then create free electives. Now that turns out to be a really good thing. What were formerly requirements became restricted electives, allowing uh, students to choose courses that more align better with their target school, regardless of whether that they're going to NJIT or Rutgers. Um, so there's a lot more choice 
um, in the courses that you can take if you're going to get your engineering degree from Bergen. And we hope that's going to improve the number of students that actually complete the engineering associate's degree at Bergen. Activity number seven, it was to create a platform to showcase the talent of all our STEM students. That's how we develop the STEM C-Square Research Summit. The STEM C-Square Research Summit, which happens every April here at our campus in Paramus, New Jersey, will showcase the research of all our STEM talented students. We also invite local high schools, community colleges, and four-year institutions to compete on a poster competition. Aside from the poster competition, we also have workshops and concurrent sessions that you're all invited to attend to get professional development and get more information about the program. Activity number eight is the development of dual admission agreements as well as articulation agreements to help you transfer to these colleges and universities after you get out of Bergen Community College. Dual enrollment uh, and uh, transfer um, is a very big part of the, um, uh, this version of the STEM grant, of the second part of the STEM grant. Uh, what we learned uh, from our partner institutions um, is that uh, depending on what major the students have when they transfer, uh, they really should be selecting different courses in their first two years uh, at Bergen. Um, an example of that is our engineering science degree. Depending on what your sub-major is, meaning if you're interested in uh, choosing civil engineering, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, or electrical engineering, you need to take different courses in your first two years at Bergen. So before we had this initiative, uh, all the students were basically taking the same courses. And it worked out very well if you were in civil or mechanical engineering, but not so well if you were in any of the other disciplines. Now, we've uh, changed our, our curriculum and made a new articulation agreement that it depends on what the student is interested in majoring when they transfer. The idea of communicating better with our four-year partners is enormously helpful to our students. We potentially can save them a semester or maybe even a year in some students' case when they transfer. The idea is to have two plus two arrangements, not two plus three or two plus four. We want our students to transfer as many credits as possible uh, to our four-year partners. Activity number nine is the introduction of Open Educational Resources, or OER. Simply means we are creating free textbooks for you guys. This way we can alleviate some of the extra costs of attending college. In a number of the classes that we offer here at Bergen, we have Open Educational Resources available to you. What is an OER? Well, an example of an OER is what I have here right now. This is a publication, this is a lab manual which uh, the faculty at the college have written and if you take a laboratory course at Bergen Community College, you don't have to buy a lab book. You don't have to buy a lab book because we created our own for you to use. In many other classes, we've either created lab books or we've adopted free textbooks so the cost to students who come to college is much, much less. Activity number 10 is the introduction of the Financial Literacy Center here at Bergen Community College. Go to room A121 if you have any questions related to financial, how to manage your budget, or even to ask about scholarships. What I do here in this office is I help students with their budgeting and personal finance, money management, credit building, things of that nature. During the fall and spring semesters, I'm here from 8.30 to 12 for walk-in appointments, so feel free to stop by and we can work together on this. If you prefer more of a private setting, because I do have an open door policy, feel free to schedule an appointment and we can always sit down and work on your budget together. Activity number 11 is the STEM Running Start program. The STEM Running Start program is a series of classes or sessions that will prepare you to take the proficiency exam for intermediate algebra, pre-calculus, or introduction to chemistry, or you can also prepare for the upcoming STEM courses through the prep classes, which is a series of two or three day sessions that will give you the foundation to do well in the upcoming semester. Ronistar is a wonderful idea uh, brought to us by the Stematics you know, grant. The class is basically uh, introducing the concepts of microbiology 
is septic techniques and proper behavior in a microbiology laboratory. Uh, the class is customized for clinical and medical students. You know, they have an understanding of microbiology as a clinical science, and they learn that the topics are going to be demanding, and they had to develop some kind of time management skills before they start the class. You know, so, uh, so far we've been very successful bringing students into the class, and uh, it looks like when I meet them down the road during the semester, they. They all mentioned the fact that growing starting will help me out really dealing with the demands of the microbiology class, you know. One of the unexpected outcomes of the program was a student-initiated movement to create their own organization. The result of that was the STEM Student Union or STEM Club. The STEM Student Union is a group of students that meet weekly to discuss STEM opportunities as well as research project ideas. You do not have to be a STEM major to be part of the STEM Club but you must be a motivated student willing to work hard to achieve your goals. If you want more information about the STEM Club, please visit us at bergenstem.com for a full list of projects as well as the activities that we have going on every semester. This is the Rocky Composting System, model A900. We have the mid-size one, which is perfect for the amount of waste we produce at this college because now we are only taking waste from the cafeteria staff. So in the mornings when the cafeteria staff comes in, um, they prepare the food for the day, they put everything aside for us, for our team, and then one of the girls will go and pick it up and then they just dump it in here. If you get closer, you can see all of our food scrap waste. Okay, so we just insert our food scraps and then we match a bucket of wood chips. So here, what we have is what we consider cured soil. Soil that can actually be used for plants to grow. It's been sitting here for way more than six weeks, but it usually takes um, a six week period for it to cure from when it is exited out from the rocket. It will be analyzed and then it can be used for gardening purposes. So you can grow your plants, your fruits and your vegetables and possibly have a very, very successful growth rate. What we do is we collect different types of data. So for one, I'm going to concentrate on the data logger that we have here. Um, what this does is there's different zones in here and it'll read you the temperature in Celsius. So it might be reading a little bit differently because we have this thing open. Um, so and it, it measures everything in Celsius. So it starts from the beginning to the second zone to the third and then the fourth zone. So we expect it to go from really hot, which is up here towards the mouth of the rocket and then gets a little bit colder towards the end. So what this does is it helps us to see what ranges of temperature we're reaching. Okay, so we're working on Project Enable. We're creating uh, prosthetic hands, just like this one. Except the beginning of this is 3D printing. So right now, we've been, we covered a little bit about 3D printing. We had a, actually a 3D print and something went wrong. We have two files printing, excuse me. One of them was perfectly fine. This is a bracelet that we're gonna thermal deform. So we printed this flat and in a minute, you'll see how we can form this thing to be to wrap around her hand, her wrist. So getting a little bit know about the material of 3D printing and what, what, are, what's, what goes on behind 3D printing. But his print unfortunately failed. And something happened along the lines and it just stopped at this layer, something went wrong. So we're trying to see what went wrong. If we don't fix that, we, go to, we put a larger print in there and then the, all that material is wasted. So, you know, I'm telling him 3D printing is like, you know, there's a little bit of forensic science going on. You can trace, by looking at this, it's a common problem. The entire layer went bad. What went wrong? It could have been the belts, could have been something. We have to figure out what went wrong before we move forward. Otherwise, we're really wasting time because the problem might happen again. So, and this is good. The whole point of this, again, as I tell him, it's a learning, it's more, it's more about learning than anything else. So if we can learn what went wrong there and fix that, that's a plus.
Uh, I'm Mark Balzaret. Um, I teach in the Manufacturing Technology Program here at Bergen Community College, and I'm the Manufacturing Technology Laboratory Supervisor. Uh, I'm also the faculty mentor for the electric motorcycle uh, project here, the STEM project, our 3SP project, and, um, and I enjoy working with these students to do this project. Uh, Michael Malco came to me uh, about a year ago and he was interested in uh, doing this motorcycle conversion, converting a gasoline motorcycle to a electric motorcycle. And I have a lot of motorcycling experience, I've been a motorcycle f mo motorcyclist for many years and I've had a motorcycle shop too, so um, I think that he recognized that I would be a good person for uh, mentoring this project. I think this is a great project. They're, they're really a, a group of smart people, very smart students, very motivated, passionate about the project, and uh, are doing a very good job. This summer, we're trying to make a sunscreen. The big problem with curcumin, though, is that it stains. It stains really bad. So we don't really want to put it in a sunscreen at a high concentration. So we're trying to remove the color while keeping its properties. And that's what this compound is all about. That's why we're trying to isolate it. I came into Bergen not knowing what I wanted to do. But since I joined STEM, I found my passion. I became part of the STEM Student Scholar Program, which means that I was one of the first students to participate in research in the new state-of-the-art research facility that we have here. And it is definitely what makes Bergen Community College special because it gives students the opportunity to explore their career options through hands-on research, which gives them experience that students usually don't get in an undergraduate level. And it's a great opportunity because the program offers students many benefits such as leadership development, workshops, mini courses, and the ability. As a STEM student, you can actually learn a lot from being involved in projects with other students. Everyone has the same goals, which is to keep on advancing in, in life for a better future for this earth. As a research, I've been able to obtain myself with more knowledge, um, do more of digging out what it is that we need to know, um, also learning more about the brain waves and what other tools can we use to be able to figure out the information that we need. I've been um, learning of working as a group because research is all about how many people can collaborate with it and help out each other. It's something that I have to admit that I learned how to do from this experience and I hope that many of us can also learn as well as I did. Because of STEM, I've been able to participate in a research project and even an internship. These opportunities have helped me gain real life experience. And along the way, I noticed significant self-improvements. The experiences I have with the STEM program uh, allowed me to apply and ultimately win a few scholarships. Uh, also, the exposure that I had to the academic research is something that I could take uh, with me for the rest of my life. Uh, also, as a minority student, the STEM field is really attractive because of all the opportunities that are out there for those that are willing to put the time and effort into succeeding. I definitely would recommend any student at Bergen to join a STEM program only because most students in their first two years of college don't have an accurate understanding of what they want to gain from their academic career. So I think it's necessary exposure to get into the STEM program to see what might interest them, what they could be possibly good at, um, and it, it could change their entire path. We all work on a specific project and it's a diversity here. Everyone learns from everyone here. And all of us, we keep learning on in this. Um, this is a very good program that a very community college, specifically community college that offers this because not every community college offers this. During my first semester in Bergen Community College, I took a STEM course and it made me realize that I had a big interest, interest in uh, science and technology. Therefore, I joined a STEM club in order to start working on my future goals. I've always been interested in STEM since I was a little kid. Uh, I really like being able to work in a lab because working in a lab, in a chemistry lab, is much different than working in a chemistry class. You know, you can do a lot of math problems in a chemistry class, but analytical chemistry is um, 
a lot more frustrating, but you learn a lot more. You learn a lot more about how science actually works and um, the applications, and I think that's very important to learn early on because you don't want to spend four to six years, you know, getting a degree and then find out that, oh, this is actually not what I want to do. If you get in early, you're going to be better off. With the STEM Club, I was able to participate in the summer internship where uh, me and my team worked on high altitude balloon project uh, the whole summer. Not only we were able to learn a little bit of 3D printing, 3D designing, uh, drilling, cutting, uh, coding, and working together, but we also gained a family. The way STEM has impacted my life is growth. I was able to network with many students, advisors, and teachers throughout the whole school. I attended many workshops and helpful resources to help me become a better individual. The main objective of the program is to make sure that all our students complete their associate's degree, transfer to a four-year institution, complete their undergraduate degree, and get their dream jobs. Hi everyone, it is my pleasure and honor to greet you here in the STEM Research Center where the magic happens and where student ideas get to be implemented and brought to life. When we talk about STEM research projects, we talk about incredible areas for student growth. We talk about academic growth, where students get to try experiential learning at its best. They experience graduate level work at the community college setting. They get to work with wonderful faculty members who are dedicated, passionate, and absolutely professional in their fields. They share all of that with students every day, many hours a day, year round. When we talk about STEM Research Center, we also talk about personal growth. Students learn how to manage time, how to work under pressure, how to persevere and get the results regardless of whatever obstacles or complications come their way. We also talk about professional growth and students practicing incredibly important life skills such as problem solving, critical thinking, communication, presentation, ability to get the message across and answer questions on the spot. All of these skills are valued by professionals and by employers as one of the top skills. So students are definitely preparing themselves well for the future stages of their lives. When we talk about social growth, we talk about teamwork, ability to support each other, ability to split tasks and get results. And that is also some of the higher level ranked tasks on the employer's list. We talk about values, long-term values and short-term values that this experience brings to students. On the short-term values, students will be able to showcase their work at the conferences, at the events, at the interviews they attend. As a long-term value, this experience provides students with an opportunity not only to be Bergen Community College ambassador, not only promote what we do here, not only to advertise by their own work, by what they do, but also by coming back here and helping others in the same way that Bergen Community College staff members, faculty members, fellow researchers help them. This is how we create the community of the STEM, of the research, of the students who love what they do, who are passionate, and who are set to succeed. Thank you. None of this would have been possible without the financial support of the U.S. Department of Education, Hispanic Survey Institutions Division, as well as the ongoing support of the Upper Administration here at Bergen Community College, as well as the Board of Trustees. On behalf of the STEM students, staff, and faculty, Thank you!